Trinista Plessis with the Trinista Plessis Show. Thank you for tuning in. We are going to get right into the program. The next skit that you're getting ready to see is called Don't Allow Your Pain to Cancel Your Purpose, where I play a doctor named Dr. Rolanda Duplessis. We will see you next time. Enjoy the show. Good afternoon, everybody. I am so thank you for all of the people that have invited me to speak to you today to be your uh, motivational speaker today. I'm very honored and um, esteemed by that. Um, the message that I have today is something that's coming from my heart and it's something that's so sincere and I hope that you're moved by the things that I'm going to say and also the story that I'm going to tell behind it. Um, a lot of us are living in darkness and we don't see the light because we have allowed pain to motivate us and to move us. We've, let, we've put pain in front of purpose instead of letting purpose be in front of pain. So my people that are in the audience and that are listening to what I have to say, don't let your pain cancel out your purpose. Don't let your pain cancel out your purpose because everybody has been through something in their life, my brothers and sisters. Everybody has been wounded some kind of way and someone or something has hurt us. And we have swallowed and, and consumed ourselves in that and purpose is just going out the door because you can't see far past the pain that you have suffered, my brothers and sisters that are listening in the audience right now. You have a calling on your life and it's your responsibility to answer the call of God. A lot of us don't believe that we don't have the call because pain has canceled our purpose. We allow pain to cancel our purpose because you think you don't deserve it, people. A lot of you are in guilt. I did this, I did that, and I shouldn't deserve this, so I'm just gonna live my life in pain and cancel out purpose. You can't do that. Because what you don't know is when you use pain as a catapult for purpose, People can see you as a testimony. People are going to want to know, how did you get out? How did you survive? How did you overcome? How did you triumph it? That's what the people are going to know. And you in the audience that's listening and looking, and those who are looking on the internet and all over the world who sees my message. <clears throat> Don't let pain cancel out your purpose. Use it for fuel to be the light that's in this dark. Because what it is that the entities that are floating around in this world don't want you to live out your purpose. And we succumb to it. We fall prey to it. We fall prey to our pain never getting out. And we put shackles on our own feet. We put shackles on our own feet, people, that's what we do. And we gotta stop doing that. Because there's more to us than pain. There's more to us than pain. I'm gonna read a scripture to you. <coughs> I wanna read this to you. Ephesians 6, 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. That's the New International Version of the Bible. 
Let me go down and read the King James Version. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness, against spiritual wickedness in these high places. That is wickedness that sit up at the top, that's raining down on the people and oppressing us. But we got to keep that third eye open and understand that we are no longer going to be oppressed people. We are no longer going to be depressed people. We are no longer going to be people that have been stolen from. We're going to take back what belongs to us. And my people that's listening, is this you? Is that you? Have you let pain cancel out your purpose? Don't do it. Use pain to be a light and to testify and to show people that you are more than your pain. Because as this earth continues to spin, my people that are listening, as this earth continues to spin, they are always going to have evil, and they're always going to have good. They're going to have good people, and they're going to have bad people. You can't do anything about it. But your assignment is to be a good people, a great people, and use your gifts to stir this earth better. Because the more good that we put out, people that are listening, the more people that, the more good that you put out, the more good that you put out, the more good is going to come your way. And when you use your gift, my brother in the audience, when you use your gift, my sister in the audience, somebody else behind you is going to use their gift. Somebody else behind you is going to use their gift. Everybody in this room that I'm looking at right now, you have a purpose and you have gifts. So it's a domino effect. Now I'm going to get on this subject and it's going to be uncomfortable because I have to be real and I got to be authentic. We have no time to sugarcoat anything, my people. Those of you who have called to be leaders and pastors and bishops, we have no time to sugarcoat anything. And I may be hated for the things that I say and do and what I operate, but I have to say it because we have to release the shackles off of our arms and our legs because if they're in bondage, we can't do anything if our hands are bounded and our feet are bounded. So I am here to release that. If you're a leader of the church, if you're a leader, and I'm talking to my pastors and my bishops and my prophecies that are out in the audience, and I say everything I say with love. If you're out there and your congregation is poor, and struggling and trying to get by and they're eating crumbs and you eating well every day, you're driving well, that shouldn't be. That's not how God set this thing up, okay? You are supposed to tell the people how to get out of their bondage, out of their trauma. You can't preach prosperity preaching to people that haven't been healed. Oops, ouch, ouch, ouch. You can't preach prosperity to people that cannot be healed and have not been healed, have not been delivered. You got to deliver them first and you got to help them because if you're the only one eating you're the only one eating. That is not the picture God set up. That's not what he set your leadership position up for. And those of you who don't know me, my name is Dr. Rolanda Duplessis. I'm a motivational speecher, speaker. I'm an author of many books. I'm a writer, wife and a mother. But most of all, I'm a servant of God. I'm a servant of God. And that's 
where you get it messed up, people. When you give yourself more title than what you need to have. So I don't go around telling people to call me Dr. Rolanda Duplessis. I don't need you to call me a doctor. I really don't, even though I got the education for it, but I don't need you to call me a doctor, people. I am a servant of God first. Yes, I have plaques and I have degrees all on my wall in my office, but I don't get caught up in that, okay? Because I can put on some jeans, some tennis, Roll up my sleeves, and I'm going in those crack houses, in those drug houses, in those neighborhoods, and bring the people out. I'm going to get myself dirty. A lot of you pastors are not getting yourself dirty. You ain't dirty. You ain't, because you ain't, I'm sorry. Hey, you guys invited me to speak, and I'm sorry if I'm offending everybody, whoever I'm sorry, but this is authentic, real things that must be said. You cannot eat well, and your congregation is starving, people. Leaders that are out here, I'm talking to you. You cannot be eating well and your congregation is starving. It does not go like that. God did not set it up like that. You ought to help and minister and to build up your people, get them healed and delivered so that they can have prosperity. You are preaching to broke, poverty people and you're eating. They're God did not set it up like that. And a lot of you missed it. A lot of you shouldn't even be in leaders' positions. A lot of you shouldn't even be preaching. You shouldn't even be because you figured you're a good talker. You look good with your tie and suit on. And women, you look good with your diamonds and your collar and all that. You look important. <laughs> you look important. So... You dress up, but you're not really that on the inside. So I need some of you to cancel your positions, <laughs> to turn your papers in and walk away from these positions because you are not qualified. You can't qualify yourself without God's stamp of approval. Dr. Rolanda Duplessis, I'm being real, and I'm hated in a lot of places because this is the type of teaching I do. Y'all didn't think y'all was going to get this today, huh? <laughs> y'all didn't think that I was going to talk about this. But hey, when God bring a word, I'm doing it in love. When God bring a word, we got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. We got to talk about it. People need healing. People need healing. I didn't come in a suit today. I didn't come dressed up because I want you to see me and what I'm saying. I don't want you to see what I have on. I want you to see, and a lot of you leaders, you, <laughs> They see what you got on. We need to see this, this heart of yours, and see if it's real. People need deliverance. And they want it. They're yearning for authentic people. And some of us have been fooled. So some of y'all in here need to turn in your papers because you're not authorized to be teaching. God didn't give you that. You did it for a business. Hello? You did it for a business, and we can't do that, people. We can't get in business with God. You can't offer money and things and riches to God. He own all that. How can you offer anything? No. He wants this. He wants your soul. He wants 
your supplication. He wants you to serve him, and you're not doing that. Some of you should be doing other things, and a lot of people don't know, want, don't know how to call themselves a servant because it seems so lowly. Oh, a servant? Mm-mm, no, I'm, I need to be a bishop. I need to be a doctor. I need to be all of that. I don't need to be just called a servant because that doesn't seem like it's important. Hello? The only one you need to be worrying about is God. God is the important one. He's using you as a vessel. And if you have ego in your spirit, he can't use you. You can't get to the people with your ego, people. If you are walking around with an ego, he can't use you, people. With an ego, he can't use you. No. Your flesh is ruling you. Your titles is ruling you. No. I want to read this quickly. It's called Rewounded. And I wrote this years ago, because I am a writer as well. I wrote this years ago, and I'm going to try to get through it so you can understand it. And if we run out of time, we just run out of time. But let me say this. Joe and Sylvia Brown are married, and they live in a destructive lifestyle. They live a very destructive lifestyle. They're a drug-dealing couple that has not been saved. They both come from broken homes and mental and physical abuse. Joe had a stuttering problem, and he was teased in school, so he quit in the 11th grade. Sylvia started having sex at 12 years old. She had a few abortions in her time. She started selling her body at 18. This couple is in pain, was in pain, continues to be in pain all of their lives. And they did not know how to handle their problems. They worked out jobs, but they stole resources for drug money. They live in a rented home, and everything in the house was bought with drug money. The area was poverty stricken and drug infested. The couple had an agreement if they understood that work was work. They often smoked marijuana and crack for pleasure and sometimes heroin. The world had wounded this couple, but something would happen that decided to change their life in the worst than the world scars. Worse than the world scars. Listen to that. Worse than the world scars. I'm going somewhere with this. Sylvia and Joe is sitting on a porch drinking a beer, listening to music, and it's Tupac the rapper, and the song sheds so many tears. Music plays about 40 seconds or so, or a minute. An outreach worker from a local church approaches them. Good day, folks. How y'all doing today? We find, Sylvia says, and cuts the music down a little bit. I'll rework it. That's beautiful. I want to share some literature with you. Her husband, <laughs> she can't read, <laughs> he says and laughs. Well, that's okay. I will talk to you. I will talk with you. And you, and do you know who Jesus Christ, the Lord Savior, is? I heard about him, but... I don't know him personally. <laughs> and the husband says, yeah, we heard, but he ain't a friend of ours. <laughs> well, I got good news for you. Jesus died for our sins, which leads to death. You are saved by grace if you just believe and confess with your heart and soul that he is the Savior. God has a destiny and a purpose for you both and sent us here to tell you he loves you and I love you too. He wants to give you a new life with him. Something in my soul tells me that you're in a lot of pain and God can heal you. So the tears start rolling down Sylvia's eyes and her face. Man, no one has ever told me they love me. No one has ever told me they love me. You don't even know us. Yeah, this ain't right. This is a setup or something. Oh, this is a setup? Outreach worker 
Well, be calm. This is a setup from the Lord God. This is divine intervention. God has called you both to be saved. And would you be willing to say this prayer and start a new life? Joe and Sylvia both looked at each other, and their hearts were willing. But Satan put doubt in them. The devil's dressed in black. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Y'all going to be in a pole house. <laughs> you won't be able to drink and smoke drugs. Your music going to have to change. You can hardly read. Look what I got, and I've given you money, drugs, sex, nice house, and all the pleasures of life. Stay with me. Ha, ha, ha. The outreach worker says, the Lord is telling me the devil who is Satan is trying to discourage you and sway you to stay with this lifestyle. Precious children, if you stay with me, stay with him, you will surely die and go to a place called hell, which will burn you forever. The Bible I'm carrying has all the answers that you need. You will learn to read the Bible study at the church will help you both. Just say this prayer with me and you'll be saved. And Joe says, okay, we accept this Jesus guy, so tell us what to say. I'm tired of living this way anyway. Outreach worker holds their hands. Dear Lord Jesus, receive me and come into my heart, come into my life, show me the way, the righteous and truth. I accept you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. I serve you the rest of my days and no turning back. Protect me, O Lord, from the wiles of Satan, and he will no longer rule over my life. Get thee behind me, Satan. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. In Jesus' name, I say this prayer. They all hugged. Congratulations. This is the day that the Lord has made. Congratulations on your new lives. Now church is Sunday, and you both need to be baptized in the holy water. What do I wear, Sylvia says. All white like spugs. Spugs. This is the address to the church, and we'll call you guys soon. God bless you, and God keep you. The outreach worker leaves. So Joe and Sylvia were baptized and took all their new member classes. Sylvia learned to read completely, and Joe got his GED. They moved to a new house and a worker, new jobs. They attended all Bible studies and learned the Bible. They studied together. They would change, and they spilled their souls to the congregation. And there were whispers and spectators in the church. Some judged them greatly. Joe stutters a little, and he says in front of the church, I give my obedience to God and then to the whole church. I was out there selling drugs, taking drugs, selling drugs, taking drugs, drinking, having all kind of women. And what I'm most ashamed was I was selling my wife. I was selling my wife, but that nice lady, Sister Patrice, saved me from a form of destruction, and I have accepted Jesus Christ, but I will be learning. Thank y'all. Sylvia gets up and says her piece. I also want to give my obedience to God in the church, and I was drinking, smoking, stripping, selling my body, and I could barely read. But the outreach worker saved me and my husband. We have accepted Jesus, and he has given us a new life. And we are still learning things. God is opening doors for us. Thank y'all. Congregation claps. And that is that. A church member calls another church member on the phone. You know how it goes. Church member calls church member one. Girl, I thought you would never call. Did you see Sylvie with that cheap dress she had on with all that makeup? Was she still swinging on a pole? <laughs> These are Christians talking on the phone. Church member two, yeah. And did you see her husband with that yellow suit on? Was he still pimping her? <laughs> Girl, they were a sight. When they gave their testimonies, I could have thrown up. They are filthy Christians. Church member two, girl, she wants to be in hospitality. She must be out of her mind. She asked, and I told her we had enough people, and I'll let her know. She got a nerve to say she's going to take some evangelist classes, evangelism classes. She can't hardly read. This is hilarious. Ha <laughs> ha. Girl, her husband wants to be an usher. He must be joking. That would be a sight, an ex-drug dealer and a pimp as an usher. Ha <laughs> ha. Church members. 
Joe and Siri began to feel uncomfortable at the church, especially when they shared their testimonies and dreams. Some people did not want to speak to them or even acknowledge them. They would ask to be on different ministries and would get the runaround from leaders in the church. Some of the church members became jealous of the couple. They stood by each other. Someone boldly told them that the church did not trust them considering their past, and they were not worthy enough to be on any ministry. Church people, Christians, so-called Christians. This person was a mess maker of the church and who had caused folks to leave the church feeling betrayed. Sylvia cried for days and she wept. Joe was more angry than ever has he ever been. He was bitter. He figured God had let him down and what's the point of serving him? When church folks ain't right either, the devil lives in the church too, he thought. They tried to hold on to their jobs, but they quit. The devil preyed on their weakness and eventually lured them back to the destructive lifestyle. They cut all ties from the church. They changed phone numbers and moved back to the drug-infested area. Some of the outreach workers and pastors tried to reach them on the phone, and it was disconnected. The outreach worker who prayed for them and reached out to them was concerned and worried. She later found out what really happened and discussed it with the outreach ministry and the pastor. They really gave her a bad taste in her, at her church. One Sunday after church, the outreach worker ate her dinner and decided to read the Sunday paper. The headlines were a married couple found dead in their home. It was Joe and Sylvia Brown. They overdosed on drugs. The outreach worker was distraught and hurt. She wept for them. She was angry because the church re-wounded the couple and scars were deeper than the world's. The pastor also read the paper and was deeply disturbed by the news. He preached a sermon called Blood on the Church Hands. He preached from the depths of his soul. The Holy Ghost took over him, and some members left the church because they were convicted. The outreach ministry prayed the demons out the church, and the church reached a new holler calling. The blessing blockers are going. I want to say I hope that you took this short story and understand that you can't block people out of their calling. And again, I'm Dr. Rolanda Duplessis, and I thank you for having me, and I will see you. I'll be in Florida next week. Um, if you want to follow me, you can follow me on Facebook at uh, Dr. Rolanda Johnson, and I'll be there. And um, if you want to have any questions or concerns, I'll be happy to help you. God bless. Don't say